Even before she was born, the legend was told of a virgin maid from Lorraine who would come forward to lead the Kingdom of France to salvation. It pleased God thus to act through a simple maid in order to turn back the king's enemies. by her people as a foretold legend come to life and burned by those that feared her. Joan of Arc continues to inspire the world 570 years after her death. Let all those who love me In the span of just two short years, the 19-year-old peasant girl led the French army to victory, saved the crown of King Charles VII, and changed the face of history. Internationally acclaimed director Luc Besson, Mila Jovovich, John Malkovich, Academy Award winners Faye Dunaway and Dustin Hoffman. Go deep into the archives of France in pursuit of the real Joan of Arc, peeling away the mythology and mystique to reveal the human face behind this legendary icon. Who are you to even think you can know the difference between good and evil? Are you God? I'm just a messenger. When I was 13, I heard a voice from God. The first time, I was terrified. for the epic adventure involved more than six months of preparation for filming that took place throughout France and the Czech Republic. Mila Jovovich stars as the legendary heroine Joan of Arc. At the age of 23, Mila has already built an impressive resume. Recently, she starred in Luc Besson's The Fifth Element and Spike Lee's He Got Game. To pull off the complex and demanding role of Joan, she completely immersed herself in the character. A tremendous amount of research went into the making of this film, even before shooting began. We explored the authentic 15th century locales where Joan lived, fought, and ultimately died. We meticulously scoured national archives. Using these extremely rare illustrated manuscripts, which were the newsreels of their day, the filmmakers were able to recreate with exacting detail the fortresses, weaponry, and troops involved in the actual battles. research unearthed a wealth of information about Joan of Arc. The deeper they dug, the more real she became. I think a lot of people's image of Joan of Arc is very one-dimensional. There's not a person there. She's just an icon. And yet there's an abundance of actual historical documentation available. 
If she had remained a simple peasant girl her entire life, we would never have heard about her. But she had an important role at a specific moment in history, and she was considered an angel. It's what simple people think that matters, and the fact is that simple people up and down this country are already talking about her. Now, you know what simple people are like. Always ready to believe any old prophecy. Like this one, about a virgin from Lorraine saving France. In these idyllic fields, Joan played as a child. Born in the tiny village of Domremy, the daughter of a farmer, her simple peasant beginnings are a striking contrast to the historic fate that would befall her. God sent us an illiterate peasant to carry out such an important mission. Do you think that God made the right decision to take an ignorant girl to save the kingdom of France? I leave that answer to God. Joan grew up in 15th century France at a time in history when the class system was extremely rigid. It was truly amazing that a girl of such humble beginnings was able to become a leader of her nation, especially as a young woman. This is the house where she was born. In the back of the house, there is two windows where she used to sit and look over to the forest. I'm very proud to be a part of uh, the family of Joan of Arc because this woman had changed the history of France and uh, the history of the world. Joan began to experience what she believed to be divine visions. This teenage peasant girl believed she had been chosen to lead her country in a battle against the English. At first, Joan was shocked by the voices and kept them to herself. But eventually, her extreme faith led her to follow them. <sighs> Message. This is the third and last time I will write to you. If you are still here at noon, I warn you, you will hear from me to your very great destruction. Many of the letters that Joan dictated still exist in the archives of France. And even though she never learned to read or write, she did know how to sign her name. We found her actual signature in the archives of France. Exactly as she wrote it 570 years ago, she was only 18 years old. Another one from this girl calling herself the Maiden of Lorraine. I can read for myself, you know? She pretends she's been sent by God. These charlatans. It's a pity there isn't enough wood to burn them all. She says she'll be here tomorrow. I knew him among the rest, for the voice counseled me and revealed it to me. And I told the king that I would go to make war on the English. You think she was sent from God? You're a fine judge of character, Charles. It'll take you less than five minutes to expose her if she's a fake. But if she's not, then she will give you your answers and place the crown on your head. Joan began her fated journey into the history of the world. Passing through this very gate at Vaucouleur, she headed to Chinon, requesting an audience with the Dauphin of France. Joan's request to meet the Dauphin was unheard of for a girl of her station in life. When she finally went to meet him, he played a trick on her, placing an imposter on the throne to put her prophetic powers to the test. You're not the Dauphin. The remains of the room where this game of cat and mouse took place still exists in the ruins at Chinon. Even though Joan had never seen the Dauphin before in her life, she was able to spot him in the crowd very quickly. <sighs> How did you know who I am? And the voices said that my king would be restored to his kingdom, despite his enemies. What was the message? He said that I must save France from her enemies and bring her back into the hands of God. Once Joan had convinced the Dauphin, she next had to prove herself to the soldiers that she would lead. I can believe they are sending a woman. 
I wonder what color dress she'll be wearing. Does anyone know if she even knows how to ride a horse? She knows. Jeanne, you have to understand, it's not easy for us, I mean for our bride, to suddenly be usurped by... Well, with all due respect, by... Uh, by a girl. Oh. So that's it. To you, I'm just a girl. Come on! To the drawbridge! At the tender age of 17, Joan was tested again and again on the battlefields of 15th century France. The realities of war were shocking to the young maiden. Director Luc Besson assured that the experience was frighteningly real. Filming from the center of the action, he was forced to wear armor to protect himself as the fighting became intense and swords came dangerously close. It's a great experience because I never saw a director doing, a, you know, be on a, fr on a, on a front line like, like he's doing, you know. Every time we're doing action or we're going through the fire, or going anything dangerous, he is in it. We got 400 people in a courtyard. It's incredible, you know. Everybody was fighting like this. You got the feeling that it's yourself who's fighting, you know. These amazing sequences helped Mila Jovovich really get inside of Joan. You don't understand Jean until you see that, until you experience the terror of men killing each other all around you and and then you see what what this young girl really felt like she came in with all these ideas in her head and uh she changes when she comes out and i did too i mean i've never been through anything like that so it's uh it was it was very frightening very frightening for the strategic battle at orleans over 1500 extras were outfitted in 15th century battle gear the design team created 1,700 helmets, 900 pairs of gloves, 2,000 pairs of boots, and 300 sets of full armor. In addition to looking authentic, the armor had to move with the actors fighting. When I'm building a suit of armor, I, I get to know the actor for a start. When, you, when either, any of the guys come in and you meet them and shake hands, from that moment on, I'm sizing them up and looking at them. Not just their shape of their body, but their face, their character. And they're all, they're all made to measure. I mean, the whole game, things have got to fit perfectly and all the arms have got to work perfectly. Go now, in peace. If you do not go now, you will be buried in this field. I'm waiting for your answer. She was on her white horse alone, facing the whole English army, and she drove them away. And now, Leon is free. Word of Joan's success spread quickly. Elated by the news of her victory at Orléans in 1429, the secretary of the Parliament of Paris made this sketch in his registry. It is the earliest known drawing of Joan of Arc. Noble Dauphin, come as quickly as you can to Reims to take the crown. With the strategic battles won, Joan next traveled to Loche. In this medieval walled city, she convinced the Dauphin to take the risk and be crowned king at Reims Cathedral. Historically, Reims Cathedral is a significant place because all French kings were formally crowned there in a spiritual ceremony, anointed by God using sacred oil. Building began on this spectacular cathedral in 1211 and continued throughout the 14th and 15th centuries. Almost destroyed several times by fire and war, the imposing edifice nonetheless survived to see 25 French kings crowned within its walls. When we were filming this sequence, you could feel the grandeur and magnificence of the coronation of King Charles VII. Over 3,000 complete costumes were handmade for the film, capturing both the splendor and the squalor of 15th century Europe. 
Real items were used along with reproductions created by artisans throughout Europe. We had craftsmen from all over Europe on the film. So we had French, Italian, English, Swiss. We designed all the, um, the prints and I made very big designs because I chose it from the paintings of this period. And it's all hand embroidered with gold and pieces of jewelry. Faye Dunaway enjoyed recreating the look of 15th century French royalty. This entire look was something that was so exciting and so new. And, and I saw this look, this incredibly elegant, very, very high forehead look. And I thought, no, we have to do that. Film composer Eric Serra has collaborated with director Luc Besson on all of his pictures, including the recent blockbuster, The Fifth Element. Luc has a very precise idea, usually, of the, the role the music has to play in each scene. So he explains to me what the music must bring in terms of emotions. Then I'm completely free to do what I want uh, in terms of music. Uh, shall we come and listen? For Joan of Arc, he mixed modern synthesizer sounds with traditional choral and orchestral music to create a unique score for the film. And the fact that we've been working together for such a long time now, I understand what he wants, I understand what he likes. I like to really be inspired by what I see on the screen. I fear nothing but treachery. I have letters here from towns under siege where your people are starving, begging God on their knees to help them. And I'm here to answer their prayers. And you want to stop me? France does not belong to you, Charles. She belongs to God. Even though the king had been crowned, Joan felt her job was far from over. From this castle at Sully, Joan sent a letter of reassurance to her people. My dear and beloved friends, I, Joan the Virgin, did receive your letters indicating your fears of being subjected to a siege. Please know, I will soon be close to you, and if they are there, I will cause them to put their spurs on so quickly that they will not even know how to grab them and lift the siege. We visited the room where she wrote this letter. The 50-foot high ceiling, which was constructed without a single nail in 1385, remains intact as an impressive example of medieval craftsmanship. It was the last place Joan was to feel freedom. If God is still with her, she will be victorious. But her army is so much smaller. Then her faith will have to be bigger. After the coronation, Joan was more beloved than ever by the French people, and King Charles feared her growing influence. We are, of course, enormously grateful for your past efforts, but now your task is done. She soon found herself in the hands of her enemies. I want that girl. Burn. Rouen, the small medieval town where Joan of Arc was tried and condemned to die, was the site of many public executions. The filmmakers were haunted by the memories that still exist in this location. You didn't see what was, John. You saw what you wanted to see. We had the Latin transcripts of her trial translated to English. Much of the dialogue in the film is taken verbatim from these transcripts, and it lends these scenes a chilling reality. Jeanne, be careful. You are not helping yourself by refusing to submit to our judgment. You, who claim to be my judges, you be careful! For you too one day will be judged. I would rather die than revoke what our Lord had caused me to do. Shan, I don't understand. Why did you do it? It's not my body I want to save. It's my soul. Throughout 29 cross-examinations and torture, Joan held firm in her beliefs. If 
verdict comes at the end of a trial, Cochon, not at the beginning. Justice was certainly not served in Joan's trial. Her accusers gave her no advocate, and she was forced to defend herself. Ironically, the prosecuting attorney's bill still exists in the French archives. This girl is a witch, and tomorrow she will burn for it. At the age of 19, just two short years after her audience with King Charles, Joan of Arc was burned at the stake as a heretic. To prevent any idolatry rising around Joan's remains, her ashes were scattered into the river and floated out to sea. Manipulated and destroyed by the powerful leaders of her day, Joan was later vindicated, canonized as a saint by the same church that had condemned her 500 years earlier. I am 98 years old. My name is Mrs. Jean de Alda Dulis. It is a name that gives me great pride because the Aldas are descendants of Joan of Arc. All my children and grandchildren venerate her enormously. For me, it is a great happiness. On the world stage for less than 24 months, her spirit has endured for almost six centuries. Joan of Arc has been called everything from a savior and a saint to a heretic, witch, and fanatic. But historians all agree that she was an incredibly courageous young woman who fought for her faith and held to her convictions. The more I found out about her, the more inspired I became. Today, more than 500 years after her death, Joan is admired as a symbol of faith, courage, and strength. She will continue as a role model for generations to come.